Hey everybody, Frick the Tech Guru here, and today I want to tell you about my custom Arcade 1UP machines. And uh, for those of you who don't know, an Arcade 1UP machine is something you can buy uh, from Walmart or online. And they're about uh, $300 US a unit. Uh, the only issue with these things is they only come with uh, usually three games. So I have the Street Fighter uh, cabinet, which includes Street Fighter Champion Edition, Super Street Fighter 2, and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And then the Mortal Kombat edition, which is Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Um, what I've done, though, is I've made modifications uh, to them, and now uh, they have over 10,000 games on them. And this video is not really going to be a tutorial on how to do that. It's more of a video on uh, what is possible uh, with these machines. If you want a good video on how to modify these things, um, look for the, the Arcade 1UP uh, modification video from ETA Prime. Uh, it is easily the best uh, one, and it is the one that I followed. And uh, But I will show you kind of what was done to make these uh, that much better. So um, let's start with the Street Fighter 1, what I've done. So first of all, uh, I've replaced all the buttons and joysticks, and I've actually done that on both of them. You can see they have uh, two different color schemes. But uh, with this one, I stuck with the classic blue and red, and as you can also see, uh, there are LED lit as well, which is uh, really good in the dark. So if just kind of as a thing I'll throw out at you, if you are planning on doing a modification like this, I highly recommend using the uh, Street Fighter cabinet just because it has, in my opinion, the best uh, button layout for modification. Um, Mortal Kombat would be the second one. It has, you know, so many uh, buttons already. If you buy one of the other cabinets, most of the other cabinets, uh, some of them don't even have a joystick. Some of them only have one or two buttons. And uh, then you have to drill your own holes or you can actually buy on eBay. You can buy um, uh, a separate uh, pre-drilled uh, piece of wood that would replace this and then you put the custom buttons. So the buttons have all been replaced. I've replaced uh, the joystick and the buttons that it came with and I ordered uh, a set off of Amazon. It was about $39.99 US for uh, two, a two-player set. So I got all these buttons and the joysticks for $39.99. Not a bad price as well. Uh, and it also comes with the USB uh, controller, which I'll show you a second when I flip one of these around. As far as the software that's running, I, I got this um, I got this build from, and just so you know, it's everything is running on a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus computer. Uh, so they're just those little, you know, if you're not familiar with those, you can look them up. They're, they're a $35 computer that uh, can do so much things. Those things are awesome. And that's what's running these things. Uh, they're low powered and, and they're able to, to do everything here. And uh, those things don't have hard drives. So everything runs off of a micro SD card. And if you go to a website called Arcade Punks, uh, they have downloadable images of micro SD cards that all you have to do is copy them to the micro SD cards and then everything's kind of ready for you. So I used one of the builds on that site. I forget which one it is exactly, but I have uh, added some more games to it and done some things to it to make it even better. So just to kind of show you uh, everything you can do with the buttons, uh, you can control the menu. Now again, when you buy these things for $300, they only come with three games, which, you know, for arcade cabinets, a good price, but Nowadays, you want to get more than three games for, for 300 US dollars. So let me just show you what's on here. I'll show you all the systems first. So you have arcade games, uh, MAME, which is also arcade games, Final Burn Alpha, and Neo Geo, and Daphne. Those are also arcade games. Vetrix, Atari, Atari 5200, 7800, Lynx, Television, ColecoVision, Commodore 64, Game & Watch, Nintendo, Japanese Nintendo, uh, Nintendo Clone. So these are like custom-made, fan-made uh, versions of Nintendo games, Virtual Boy, Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, Japanese Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo clones. Just to kind of give you an idea just what that is, if you go into any of the menus here, all the games come up. So as you can see here, these are all like modifications of Super Nintendo games. Uh, for example, there's NBA Jam 2K17. So what they do is they take NBA Jam and they update the rosters, for example. That's just that's just an example. Uh, Game Gear, Master System, Sega, uh, Japanese Sega systems, Sega Genesis, Japanese Sega Genesis games, uh, Sega clones, so again, um, 
modifications of Genesis games, 32X, Sega CD, TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine, PlayStation, Scum System, and then your settings. And then um, games that were already listed in other categories just organized a little bit different. So as you can see, a ton of a ton of games on there. Again, all you have to do is pick your system. If we go to arcade games, for example, and then all we have to do is pick um, an arcade game that we want to play. So if I want to play um, WWF WrestleFest, which is one of my favorite games when I was a kid, uh, you just go to it, pick the game, uh, and it will load. And I'll show you what's on this one a little later. Mostly the same thing. I actually have a 200 gigabyte micro SD card in this one, so it has quite a few more uh, games. This one has 128. So as you can see, the arcade game boots uh, fairly quickly, fairly easily. And uh, what you can do, and what I've done is normally when you buy these things, this is normally the on button. I've I've drilled this hole a little thicker so I could fit in an extra LED button. Same with this one. This is normally the volume control. Um, this is what is now considered the hotkey. So when you're playing an arcade game, you press this button and it will insert a quarter, as you can see. And then if you press start, then you can play the game. Oops, down here. Such an awesome game. Now, one thing, uh, I've done one thing different with the two of them, and I'll show you that now. And to quit a game, you just press these two buttons at the same time. And it will go back to the menu. Everything is super easy to use, uh, very well designed, and uh, works great. Now, uh, one thing I did to this game, which is to this console, which is really cool, that not a lot of people have done yet, is I've installed uh, a light gun. So what I've done is I've drilled an extra hole up through the top, and you can see the infrared bar here. It's similar to the infrared bar that you would have on your Wii. And uh, I actually have a category in here. So if I go into here and I go to light gun games. Uh, I'll just pick Area 51, for example. There's quite a few on there, as you can see. I will uh, let the game load. You can see in the reflection here, it just comes, the set I bought was from arcadeguns.com. Uh, these aren't the best ones you can buy. There's a, these ones are actually quite old. I think they're four or five years old now. Um, but uh, they, they work fairly well. Oh, if you move it around when it's loading, it'll bring up this menu, which is here. I won't move it again. the game load so it has your crosshair on there and as you can see when the game's starting it takes a little bit for it to adjust but and uh, it kind of works that way you can turn the crosshair off if you want but so I'm just going to show you real quick I'll do the same thing insert a couple quarters here and then uh, I actually program start button to be right here on the thing I don't know if anybody remembers this game. This is a one of my favorite uh, light gun games out there. I'm playing with my left hand here, so I'm not that good. But this is just to sort of show you. And it works really well. So uh, that's one modification that I've done to this one. I've added the light gun. And it works really, really well in my opinion. You do have to install an extra piece of software to configure it with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but uh, it works really good. So that's that system. Let me show you what I've done over here to the Mortal Kombat system. Now what I've kind of done with this one is I have designed it more for uh, not only arcade games but console games as well. So as you can see it's playing Super Mario uh, 64. What I've also done with this one is, I'll just bring this controller around here, is I've plugged in uh, the Sony PlayStation controller. This is one of the Sony PlayStation controllers that came with the uh, Sony PlayStation Classic Mini, which is just a USB version of the original controller. So I plugged that into the back. It's This unit's also running off a of Raspberry Pi. Um, and what I've done, let me just quit this game here. It has all of the same systems, except this one has Nintendo 64, which the uh, this one did not. I have pretty much the entire Nintendo 64 collection. You're gonna see a couple duplicates on there as well. Now, I will be honest with you, the Raspberry Pi 3, does not emulate the Nintendo 64 that great. Uh, Super Mario 64 runs pretty well, but other than that, uh, it's kind of hit or miss. Now, the new Raspberry Pi is coming out soon. I've actually pre-ordered one, the Raspberry Pi 4, 
And the Raspberry Pi 4 has a version that has four gigs of RAM. So that's the one I ordered specifically for this machine to hopefully improve uh, the Nintendo 64 emulation. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'll do a separate video when that comes back up. Uh, another thing, because this is a bigger um, micro SD card, is I added many more PlayStation 1 games. And as you can see, it's the same menu. I'm just scrolling through with the game showing this time instead of just the um, just the, the graphics. All right, so here's uh, PlayStation. As you can see, I have a ton of PS1 games on here. And out of all the systems that are on this machine, the PlayStation 1 games take up the most because they were on uh, actual discs and uh, they, they were up to 700 megabytes a piece. Uh, and of course, the Final Fantasy series, uh, I have all the Final Fantasies, you know, Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. Those ones are much larger. So that was the reason I put a bigger memory card in this one, just so I could uh, so I could play all the games. But if I want to try one of these, let's say, um, I don't know, Mega Man 8, for example. Just press the button. And then I have this configured to automatically, now by default, it will you can, you can use the controls off of the actual arcade. And it's like that with any of the systems. Um, but this, the PlayStation, I have it so that uh, it will automatically go to... Uh, to the to the uh, PlayStation controller, so I'll just show you really quickly when that comes up. Won't be able to do it uh, with one hand too well, especially a Mega Man game. But what's awesome about the Raspberry Pi is the PlayStation One emulation is absolutely perfect. I have had zero glitches. Uh, I haven't had any games that don't work. I haven't tried everything, obviously, but of all the games I have on here and the games that I've tested, uh, they all work perfectly. No lag at all. But as you can see, they look awesome. One of the one of the best things I find about these arcade uh, one-up machines, and I had, if you check my other videos, you'll actually see one of the other custom arcade machines that I built uh, from Rec Room Masters, where you have to install your own TV and everything like that. Um, they're really nice and they're really expensive, but you have to provide, you know, your own control board, uh, your own TV, and the TV's widescreen, which uh, obviously makes for a nice TV, but all of these games used to run in the older uh, 4.3 or 5.4 aspect ratio. So it's cool to be able to have an arcade system that has the retro games in their proper uh, format, uh, being a square television rather than... Uh, than a widescreen television. So that's how the PlayStation game works. Again, if you just press uh, start and select here, it will uh, it will quit the menu and go back. I can control the menu not only from the arcade joysticks, but also from the PlayStation joysticks. So just before I let you go, I'll just give you a peek at the back, kind of what I've done. Uh, hopefully you can uh, see this. Actually, let me just turn on my brighter lights here. Sorry, my office is a mess. All right, so turn on my fluorescent lights. Hopefully that helps us. Let's see if I can flip this. Sorry, this is a really choppy video. I'm just doing quickly with my phone. All right, so uh, everything fell out here. I haven't put the back in, and as you can see, I've obviously uh, not done any sort of cable management yet. I actually build these to sell, so uh, these two are coming out of the woodwork soon. And, and uh, So anyway, that is a Raspberry Pi computer. It run. That's the whole thing. It's quite small, and everything runs off of that. You see an Ethernet plug uh, into it, which is why it's stretching right now. And then I have. Can't really see it. Sorry. Um, there is the PlayStation controller plugged into it, and then the two joysticks uh, for the arcade plugged into it as well. We have an HDMI port coming out, and then it's powered by micro uh, USB. So the big change that you make with this thing is there's the built-in monitor that it comes with on the back. This piece here, let me see if I can shift, yeah, there we go. Uh, this piece here actually uh, is what you add onto it that allows you to plug anything into it as far as a video signal. So by default, there's a, uh, a cord that comes out of here that plugs into the uh, joysticks. That's where all the games are and everything like that. That you take out and you replace with this. And that gives you an HDMI port. It gives you a DVI port and a VGA port, and then a earphone jack, uh, 3.5 millimeter, and then your power goes in there. It also gives you one of these things which allows you to control, you know, the color, the brightness, whatever, on the screen itself. So that's one of the key components right there besides the Raspberry Pi. Um, you also have to install one of these guys. This is a stereo amplifier. 
And what that allows you to do is to use the default speaker. Um, the default speaker is right here where you see those holes. And uh, you can replace that with, you can replace it with any computer speakers that you want. But uh, what I did is I just cut the end of the wires and they're just regular speaker wire. So they just go right back in the back of that receiver. And then I have this cord here that comes out of there, which gets the audio signal from the HDMI. So that's that. And I don't know if you can see under here, a lot of wires. That's the wiring for the uh, joystick. So let me just see if I can get up under there so you can. All right, so uh, each side has its own USB control board that thing right there and each button plugs into a different spot on uh, on that control board and then you do the same thing for the other side as well that's also the board you'll see the USB cord coming out of it there on the bottom that board also provides the power to the LED lighting so that's how that works uh, one of the big things that you must know if you are going to tempt this the buttons have to be plugged in the same order on both sides so you see how the slots are, you can't see it from here, but the slots are actually numbered from left to right. So for example, if you plug in the button closest to the joystick into slot one, you have to do that on the other side as well. Otherwise it will, uh, you'll have configuration issues. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's the back. Again, you might want to do some cable management. The, um, they come with, uh, things, that you put on the back here to cover everything. So once I have everything complete and I know it's perfect, I'm gonna do that. I don't really do much cable management because again, that piece covers everything uh, anyway. So that is the Raspberry Pi that runs everything. So those are my uh, custom, custom arcade machines. Hopefully you guys enjoyed so you guys can see what uh, these things are capable of. Easily the cheapest and easiest way to get a custom arcade in your home. Now by default, these machines are only about four feet tall, but for an extra $39.99, you can actually buy uh, what they call a riser, and that will allow you to, uh, to, to get it up, I think another foot and a half or possibly two feet so that it's actual standing height uh, arcade machine. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, let me know what uh, you guys have done with your arcade one-up machines. The possibilities are really endless with these guys. And, uh, you know, looking forward to hearing from you. Have a good one.